Sama. I am the head of the Italian program in the Department of Modern and Classical Languages and Literatures at the University of Rhode Island. I've been working here since the fall of 1997. In undergraduate, I majored in French with a minor in Italian, so I wanted to find a way to do both, French and Italian. This is literature and language in graduate school, but you really kind of have to choose, ultimately. So I ended up choosing Italian, and I came to, that's why I came to Rhode Island in the first place. I came to Brown University to do my PhD there. And one of the things that I discovered was that um, there were very few, if any, women writers studied in Italian programs across the country at this point. And I was a little frustrated by that. And so I started reading um, the work of American and British scholars of Italian women's history. So they're historians, they're not literary trained people. And I found that, for example, there was a great amount of work on Italian women's history in the Renaissance, but um, no other century really seemed to have been covered that well. And whereas for French, American, British women's history, great, lots of work, lots of good stuff. So I really was inspired by that work, and I decided that I wanted to do for Italian women writers what I'd seen done for French, American, British women writers. At Brown, I was able to work with a wonderful uh, professor of 18th century Italian literature, and he's a specialist in Venice, um, the Venetian playwright Carlo Goldoni. And Franco Fido is his professor's name, and he knows everyone that lived in Venice in the 18th century. So I was able to say to him, okay, I want to do something in the 18th century, I want to do something on an Italian woman writer. It's going to be feminist. And he was actually able to uh, come up with a name. So he knew about this woman. And this is a picture of her right here. This is my first book, uh, Elisabetta Caminer Turra. She was Italy's first um, female journalist and publisher. Once I worked on Elisabetta Caminer, she led me to two other female figures from Venice working slightly back in history. And so uh, the second woman is this woman right here, Luisa Bergalli, Gozzi, and she was a poet, um, a playwright, and a translator of Italian women's, um, I mean a publisher of Italian women uh, poets. So then I started working on her, researching her life, and then through her friendship with a female artist, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a painting up there by Rosalba Carriera, that's not a picture of her. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was the f most important Italian female artist in the first half of the 18th century. So these two were friends, these two collaborated, so this sort of became an interesting triangle of women's lives to look at. And it gave me a way to really um, come to understand 18th century Venetian culture, the way literary and artistic circles interact. I came to Rhode Island to go to school at Brown, to graduate mm -hmm. school. I had no idea I was never going to leave. Um, except for my time in Venice. And I, while I was finishing my dissertation, I taught at the Rhode Island School of Design. For I was there for about four years, uh, teaching Italian, but also working as an administrator. And then, um, you know, I, uh, the job at URI opened up at just the right time. And I applied, and I was really thrilled that I could come here to work. And I really wanted to work at a state school. I had been working kind of in Ivy League type of institutions, and I, I wanted to work at a state school with students maybe who were a little bit less privileged than the students I had been working with. And ever since we were born, my father has just pounded into us, you're Italian, this is the most important thing in the world. It's as if that little town in Calabria was the center of the universe. So I would guess I would say that among all of my siblings, I'm the one who took this the most seriously since I eventually got a PhD in Italian. So I always knew. I mean, I grew up feeling very Italian-American, and I couldn't wait to, to study Italian, but it was never offered in our high school, so I had to wait until university. So I studied French in the meantime. And, um, yeah, I mean, when I'm in Italy, I feel like on the level of my genes, so really happy to be there. There's something going on there, so it's just been really good that I had, had more time to study um, history and art history. Those are the two things that I really, not to mention art, I also, all those three things, but you know, when I would have done that, I 